Oh my god, dude. You know I that watch one? you all the time. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Dude, that's cool. That's yeah, really that's cool. awesome. On this go kart quick, I'll call you right back. See ya. Yeah, here it is. So, Wait. what's the history on this thing? So, I got it like about a year ago. Okay. From a buddy of mine. They had it sitting in their storage shed for probably five years. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And then I got it. I got it to run and drive. And then now I think the diaphragms and the carb have just gotten so crispy, it's just not worth it. Yeah. I mean, plus we're starting to clear some stuff out of here because I'm going to be moving soon. Okay. So. I kind of looked these up. Supposedly they're like the first UTV ever made or something like that. Yeah, if you don't know. I don't know a whole lot about them. I just <laughs> see brochures and stuff on them. Are they supposed to float or I, what's honestly, the deal? I'm not sure. They're technically not a uh, amphibious. They're called an all-season vehicle. Okay. Interesting. You see the lights do work? Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. oh yeah. The huh. battery is it's dead pretty much, but it okay. is a newer battery in it. Alright. You just pop these off. It's just a single cylinder sax two sixty five I believe. Okay. That's weird it doesn't have the uh yeah, because I, the... I put this pump on here because I was yeah. confused on that there. That is confusing. Like, where is that supposed to go to? It must be the wrong carb for it or something. I'm not real sure. Hmm. I know it is the original engine on there. Okay. They came with, it was either a 265, a 295, or they came with a 349. Okay. Twin cylinder. This one's the 295? This is a 295. Okay. Yeah. And you took apart the carb and it was all crappy in there? I it apart before and just cleaned everything out, but it, they're like pretty, I said, they're pretty crispy in there. Okay. Huh. Does that have pretty good compression? Oh, yeah. It'll fire if you just give it a lot of carb going. Hmm. I had it going down the road once when it was running okay. Yeah. It, it, it held ass. It goes like oh, 40. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Got it. Except I took the fuel tank out and the guy that had it last was my buddy and he put a bunch of screws and stuff in there to try to probably clean it out. Oh yeah. They're all just still sitting in there. Okay. Um it shifts pretty smooth and oh, everything. Yeah, it shifts just fine. Okay. Clutches aren't stuck or anything, primary or secondary. And this is how you shift? What What's reverse and forward and everything? So I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure this is forward. Okay. And they got neutral and then reverse. Well, it's that way. Okay. Thing's pretty light. It oh, it's all fiberglass, yeah. Huh. And then in here is just the uh, little side vents for it that go on right there. Okay. I mean, it's unfortunate that somebody had to paint this. Yeah, it's a cool color otherwise. Yeah. Is that the original right here? This, this is all original color. You can see it's in oh, right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, lock lead. Really faint, but it says oh, 295 yeah. right yep. there. You used to have the windshield on it at one oh, point. I, mean, I yeah. thought I had it when I got it, but I must not. I'm sure it. you can't find one for it. <laughs> There's no way. Um, yeah, yeah I, I've never seen one of these before. So. Neither had I until I went to my friend's house and he had it sitting there. I had to ask his dad for it. <laughs> he would not. He That's so hesitant on letting it go. It's a weird machine. It is. Hmm. Alright, cool. I'll take her. Alright, man. Let's go see what we got here. I think you might like this one. Alright, it's the next morning. Just got this thing home. I think it's pretty sweet. <laughs> I've never seen one of these in person before or even heard of these before I saw this one. So they're they're very rare. Very cool machines. But uh, we'll get off the trailer and uh, take a closer look at everything. Obviously the original tires on here yet. A couple of plugs in them. <laughs> Pretty funny. Got the key. I 
There's the headlight still. Pretty cool. What do you think, buddy? You like it? All right, so if you guys missed it, this is a 1970 Lockley Wrangler. Supposedly the first UTV side-by-side -side ever made. Um, they got their design from the Argos, but instead of using the weird steering, they just steer like a go-kart, which is really nice. These things are supposed to go 50 miles an hour and go up um, 45 degree inclines with no problem. Can seat three people or two people, depending on your size. Um, has headlights, the gas tank right here, which is right there, needs to be cleaned out. And then it comes with a 300cc engine. And uh, if you look it up, Google actually does say it is the first UTV, or speculated as the first UTV. So right here, you can type in first side-by-side -side ever made. Um, some people credit the Lockley Wrangler introduced in 1970 as being the first side-by-side. -side. You can see pictures of it there. So, this thing is pretty unique and pretty rare. It's pretty complete as well. Um, the red, obviously, is not the original color. I wonder if the original color is still underneath there or if it was stripped and painted. We'll have to figure that out because that would be worth stripping. Oh yeah, you can see, look at we might be able to strip that off. That would be cool. These originally came with the windshield, just like the Argos, just like a tiny little windshield over here. I'm sure it had more gauges on it as well. I know one's for a choke. Looks like right here, there's a choke. It has reverse, neutral, and um, I believe low and high, or it might just be high. Supposedly these things can float, but looking at it, it looks like we might have a problem right there. <laughs> looks like water can get in there. Unless that's above the float line, which I don't think it would be. But this thing is completely fiberglass, you can see. All fiberglass, which is really cool. It does have electric start. You can hear it go. Lights are working. So that is pretty cool. Brake right here, and the gas right here. Gas is not hooked up to anything. Let's check out the engine next. Let's just hold on to these clips. Oh, it is unhinged. That's kinda cool. So here's the engine. It's a Saks engine with a Tillotson carb, the old Tilly carbs. Got the carb and choke cleaner. <laughs> In case you forgot to brush your teeth, we got the toothbrush for free. What a good deal. So we got this thing for a thousand bucks. Um, I guess the guy said there was people coming for full price. So offered a thousand before and he said, you know, a thousand's the lowest you would do, so. We got her for a thousand bucks. Pull start. It has decent compression. Feels like, at least. Yeah, gas tank's a little rough in there. <laughs> She's a little rusty. I get that cleaned out. So, on this engine, it looks like Here's the tag. You can see it's 293cc. Here's the serial number, 6198803. And you can see the year is 70. I don't know if this is the original carb that came with these, but it's kind of a weird setup. So there's actually a vacuum line right here. 
and he said he couldn't find one on the carburetor to attach to. So what he did was just take a pump like this from an old snowmobile and then just hook this line up to the main line and had it pump up through the carb. But he said it was just overflowing the carb when he did it that way. So he said it wasn't working the best. Start by getting the spark plug out. Oops, I'm there. It's a big spark plug. That's massive. That's 24 millimeters. Right there. That's a big boy plug right there. Champion plug. Champion, what is that? D14. Looks like it was running okay. Should we see if it has spark? Turn this thing on. Let's see here. Probably just wanna work with that low battery charge here. We'll pull this thing over. I think it doesn't have spark. No spark. Are you kidding me? What the heck? Well, that sucks. Well, that is a bummer. Make sure it's on here. Alright, that's on right there. Let's see, maybe it was just off. Oh, there we go. There's spark. There we go. You guys can see that or not. Yeah, alright, we've got good spark. Whew, that was a close one. Alright, cool. Let's see if we have compression. All right, we've got fitting. There's the end of it. <laughs> Surprisingly, I had one. Get that nice and tight in there. What we might do is hook up the battery charger to it. And just see if we can get the electric start to crank this thing over. See if we can get the electric start to crank it over. We're gonna try to do throttle open. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, nothing's hooked up to the throttle, so. Somewhat open. Let's see what happens here. What did we get? 110, 20, 25. 125 pounds of compression. We're just gonna see if the rings are bad. We'll put some oil down here and we'll redo the compression test. And if the compression goes up, we know that the rings are probably warm. With the oil going down. Shoots way up, we know that the rings are most likely worn. And maybe that's why I wasn't sucking gas into the carb. Maybe not enough compression. Let's see, 125 for a two stroke isn't too bad. Usually they need around 100 PSI to run. 
All right, let's see what happens. We've got the throttle open. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, it went pretty far up. <laughs> so we're at 110, 20, 30, almost 140 now. So rings are probably slightly worn on here. I'm not sure if you can get new ones or not. We'll have to look around. But yeah, that tells us that the rings are not sealing all the way. So this gas line for the carb goes all the way down. Comes into here. It comes into this attachment right here. Looks like it was going into a tank at one point. Doesn't look like it was set up to run with this tank, I don't think. No, I don't think it was set up to run with this tank. Let's see. Yeah, the fitting's a little different. Hmm. That looks clogged down there. That's weird. Getting gas. Look in there, it's clogged. That is super strange. It's like papers in there. See that? It's all bunched up like it's a bunch of paper clogged in there. That might be why he wasn't getting gas. Hmm. All right, that's the paper that was in there. Got it unclogged here. But that was just jammed in there really tight. So that was in there. Preventing probably gas from flowing through there. So maybe that's why I wasn't getting gas. Hmm. All right, we've got our two-stroke gas in here. Obviously, this needs to be a sealed system, so it's not gonna work perfectly. So we're gonna have to find a different gas tank, but um, we do have gas going to it now. And then we're gonna squirt a little gas in the carb and just see if this thing fires up. I don't have a throttle either, so. Or a choke. We'll choke it. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh... Oh yeah, she fired right up. Sound pretty good. Let's see if it fires right back up here. Yeah, she's running. Looks like it's continuing to get gas. Let's just see here. Idle maybe needs to be a little bit adjusted here. Turn the idle up a little bit. Turn the choke off. Let's see what happens. Doesn't want to stay running. Something that pumps that gas up, doesn't it? 
and draws that in. Hmm. So he was right, it doesn't look like it's drawing gas out. Hmm. Yeah, if it was drawing gas up, it would be running consistently. I can see gas in the filter right here. See that? It's dark. So it's getting gas to the filter, it's just not pulling it up. And I don't know if it needs that vacuum right here capped off. We might try that. We'll cap off that vacuum and just see what, what that does for us. But really, that vacuum should be helping the carburetor suck that fuel in. I just don't know where it goes to. There's no port for it to go to. It's weird. So it must not be the original carb. It doesn't like to bend. I might have to put it like that. And cut that. All right, now that pulse is plugged up. All right, let's see what this does now. We'll choke it, see if she fires up here. Looks like it was getting gas coming to it. I wonder if that needle is plugged up or something. So let's just see if gas is coming out. We'll clean off this one. We'll clean off that little bit of gas and we'll see if gas pours out of here. Just keep an eye on that. Yeah, gas is shooting out. Look at that. And that just shut off. Weird. Huh. All right, I'm gonna continuously pump the gas to the car, let's see what happens. So I was continuously pumping this gas down the carb and uh, it was running perfect. So obviously it's not pumping it from the gas tank to the carb properly. So something is up. Hmm. I wonder if we can try to use that pump again and just see what happens. We'll hook up the pump 
and then tie it into this line and see if it pumps up that gas. All right, so right now, I don't think any gas is being pulled from the tank up into the carb. So you have to continuously prime that bulb um, by the gas tank to get this thing to run properly. So what we might do is bypass the bulb and um, run this pump. He said this was, this was working at one point. So what we're gonna do is tie one end into the pulser, which will activate this pump and pump from here into the carburetor. And um, I actually have another one from a snowmobile that we can try if this one doesn't work. But because this carb doesn't have an internal pump working with the pulser from the engine, you're gonna need a, an aftermarket uh, external pump to get that gas to come from the gas tank into the carb. This one has an internal one that sucks from the filter into the carburetor, but not from the actual gas tank into the carb. So let's just try to hook this thing up and just see if that works. All right, let's just make sure the arrows are pointing the right way on this thing. So in, I hope that's the right, that's the pulser. It's going into it. This is going in. All right, so this one goes right here. Filter. This line is going to go to here. Which that was kind of kink too, so I don't know if that was really properly working. Pretty loose on there too. So what I might do is cut this line off and put a different line on there. Working, I don't think. Alright, get that one off of there. Alright, let's get this one hooked up. You can see the pulser going in to here and then the gas coming in through there. So Looks like that's working pretty good. All right, 
it looks like it's pumping pretty good. It's not overflowing the carb or anything. So the choke cable gets routed. Wire goes into here. This little arm was off of it, so we're gonna screw that in. Tighten that down. Have to really crank on that. That doesn't come off of there. All right, and then we've got to just screw that little screw in there. So it tightens up on that cable. All right, now coming up to the front. Let's see, we've got the choke cable right here. Not sure if it'll pull in or not. Yeah, it'll, it'll pull out, I think. Let's see, is that working? All right, this choke cable needs a little lubrication, so I'm just gonna squirt some WD-40 down there. Just kind of work that around, and hopefully it'll work its way down. It'll be less sticky, so we're gonna work at that for a little bit. All right, check this out now. Watch that. Pull it up. Pushes right back down. All right, so that's working. All right, we're working on the throttle right now, and right now it looks like we've got it pretty good. Check this out. Pretty good with the foot lever. So we come over here, and uh, it's actually just tied into the wire. This is how it was set up when I got it. So there's just a little clamp right here, and then it's tied into that wire, going to the pedal here. And you push down. So it's a pretty, pretty simple concept. Um, <laughs> not the greatest in the world, but it is working. Looks like they just took a coat hanger, wrapped it around the wire, and then wrapped it around the foot pedal. It's working though, so I don't know. We'll see if that uh, we'll see if that lasts. All right, and then this thing has a brake as well. You can see the brake pedal right there. That's actually working, and um, it leads down to a drum brake down here. And if you watch me push it, it actually locks up pretty good. See how it rolls. No, it doesn't roll. So that brake is working good. So we're just charging up the battery right now. I think what we're gonna do is try to put some paint stripper on this and we'll see if it brings back that green color. So we're using this citri strip. Shake that up a little bit, and then we'll apply some of that for about 30 minutes. Shake it up. Let's do the corner piece. It's like right here. Alright, then we'll watch and see what happens. Alright, been about 30 minutes, and it looks like there's actually white underneath the red paint, over here at least. So, we're just gonna wipe that off. Actually, the green is starting to come through. It looks like they primered it before they painted it green. So I went a little deeper, and look at that green coming through. So after the first ride, we might try to strip that down and get that back to the green color. So this part of the seat is not attached. You can see, just kind of flopping here. We're going to mount this up here and drill from the back into the seat so that uh, 
that will be nice and sturdy there. All right, now it's all nicely attached. Check it out. That's not going anywhere. So that is good to go. Looking pretty sweet. <laughs> The whole body of this thing flexes. <laughs> so sketchy. So light too. It's definitely not made for off-roading. It's uh, I think meant for like sand and like the road because every time you hit a bump the whole thing just flexes and rattles and <laughs> it's definitely unique. I'll give it that. Alright this thing is definitely not an off-road machine. The thing is flexing, rattling all over the place. <laughs> Battery's not charged up enough so we're just using the jumper pack in there. Let's just see if this thing works now. And it's really hard to control because my legs are crammed in here. You got throttle and brake. And there's a bar right here where the brake pedal is so it's really hard. All right, let's see. Take her on the road here. Hopefully the throttle doesn't stick. It's weird control on this thing. Pretty quick. Just 
hoping that throttle doesn't stick on me. We'd be having a bad day. Make sure our brake is working good. Yeah, our brake is working pretty good. I don't know if I want to go 50 miles an hour in this thing. Taking it easy because I don't want to have the throttle stick or something weird. Turning radius is pretty good. chain came off. I think it broke actually. It came off once before too. Oh no it didn't come off. What well, came off then? That's not good. Hmm. I don't know. That's weird. Wasn't moving. Something happened. Oh, it looks like it came out of gear. There we go. is flexing on me. <laughs> gear again.
early. Huh? Oh, this thing's hard to drive. <laughs> yeah, I put it away. <laughs> Why? Because. <laughs> It's a little squirrely. Well, first ride on the Lockley Wrangler. Thing is pretty sweet. <laughs> it's obviously unlike anything I've ever ridden before. It's uh, super sketchy, super light feeling because it's all fiberglass. And um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to control too. <laughs> You'll get some bad wheel wobble if you make a wrong turn. <laughs> but uh, she moves pretty good. The only problem we were having is the transmission was popping out of gear. And I think that's because, if you look in here, look at that shaft output. See how that flexes like that when you move it? Every time I hit a bump, it was flexing like that, and it was moving that arm right there. So watch, I'll flex it and it moves that arm. So I think it was bouncing enough to where it was moving that out of gear. But if you just hold it in gear, it's fine. It just needs to be a little bit stiffer, and maybe I can stiffen something up over there so it's a little bit harder to put in the gear. That's really the only complaint, and then obviously the gas tank needs to be better uh, fitted on here. It'd be nice to get the original one back on. So we have a closed system here. But the carburetor seemed to be pumping fuel into it consistently. Uh, wasn't leaking anything, so that was fixed. Obviously, could probably use some new gaskets in the carb, but right now it runs and drives pretty good, pretty consistently. It'd be kind of cool to see if this thing would float. So maybe once it warms up here, and if I still have this thing, what we're gonna do is plug every hole and then try to take this in the water and see if it floats. Because I don't think I've seen a YouTube video on this thing floating yet, so I think that'd be pretty cool. But. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video on the first ever UTV side-by-side -side ever made. Pretty cool machine and uh, they're super rare. Highly recommend you go pick one up if you can find one. They are pretty cool. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next one and until next time.